Katie from Gabe and Zach and today I'm here to talk to you about something really fun. It is fabric organization and storage. I know, I know, you might not be an organizer like I am, but that's okay. Everyone has fabric. Everyone needs fabric for their projects. Let's just talk about what we do with it once we get it in our homes. I know that each person has a different situation on their fabric storage. You might have a whole room, you might have a shelf, you might buy on demand, but Everyone can use a few tips and tricks and different techniques on how to store their fabric so that you can find exactly what you want when you need it. What's my number one goal with fabric organization and storage? It's a pretty simple one. Make it visible. Whether you have it behind a closed cabinet or out in the open like my shelves so that you can find and pinpoint a fabric that you need when you need it. The current techniques that I use make it so that you can see the prints, you can see the colors a lot easier, and that just speeds up the time and it helps me with my decision-making process for sewing garments. What do we do? What's the first thing? Well, today I have four different techniques or ways to fold or roll the fabric. So the first one, my favorite method, uses the six by 24 inch ruler. So this is my preferred method. I've gone through quite a few and this is what you'll find most of my fabric is organized using. I'll show you how I do that. The second method is using a comic board. These I buy on Amazon. This one is seven and a half by seven by 10 and a half inches. Um, you can use whatever size works best for you and you'll fold the fabric and roll, kind of roll it around this. This works great for fabrics that are looser, like wovens, um, and then I use this also for cotton wovens. Another way is you can hang your fabric. This is great if you have a closet space or you have um, limited shelving in your area. Hanging fabric can work as well. The last method is the rolling method. I'll tell you what fabrics I prefer for this method. I have seen people use this exclusively for all of their fabric. It's not my pref preferred way, but it might be yours. We're over here at my main fabric storage. I'm using an Ikea Expedit um, 4x4 cube. This is my preferred method of storage. I have them in different sizes stacked together. Um, if you are stacking them, make sure that they are mounted. These get really heavy and you don't want them to fall if someone pulls on them. So what I've done, is for organizing, this whole column is cotton lycra. So I have cotton lycra solids, cotton lycra prints, cotton lycra uh, stars and splatter, and then cotton lycra stripes. And then if you go over here, it's rib knit. Solid ribs, floral ribs. So I prefer to put things like that. Now, could I have mixed them? Sure, I could put all solids together, but I find that I work on projects by similar type together. For example, I'm wearing a game day tee. Game day tees were great for color blocking. See how there's automatically the yoke is already in here, so it's a great color blocking piece. I used three different types of cotton lycra. This would have been kind of odd or awkward if I had used cotton lycra, rib, and brushed poly. They're all different types of fabrics. They work together differently and they feel differently. So by putting things in a similar area, I could pick the white neck band, the print, and the stripes all from a similar area makes it much easier, especially for a, a pattern like this that has inherent color blocking. Here I'm going to show you my favorite way of folding fabric. This is using the 6 by 24 inch quilting ruler. This is what I use after trying different methods. What I like about this is that it's a six inch wide stack of fabric that you have finished folded. And since I'm using 12 inch Ikea cubes for fabric storage, I can get two of them stacked next to each other. Also meaning you have more visibility of the end of the fabric. Let me show you how I fold this fabric. I have here fabric that just came out of the wash. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to fold wrong sides together, salvage to salvage. The selvage is the factory finished edge, not the cut edge that you got from the store. This is oftentimes the edge that's rolling towards the back, the wrong side. So wrong side to wrong side. 
and then lay out your fabric. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll place the ruler on top of the fabric about five inches below the edge. This can be an approximation. What we're just trying to do is be able to fold the fabric over. We don't want it to really go past the ruler edge. It's okay if it's rolling a little bit. Then what we're going to do is hold down the ruler and the fabric and flip it onto itself. We'll continue this process, making sure to adjust or flatten out the fabric if it starts to roll as you go. Now, if you have at the end a little bit of fabric that's rolling over to make a finished edge, all you need to do is pull back those two layers a little bit and kind of fold them under. And now you have a flat finished edge here. The only thing left to do is get the ruler out. The easiest way to do this is to hold your hand on the selvaged edge, not the folded edge, put and hold the fabric down that way, and then reach your hand inside of this rolled up and pull out the ruler. Ruler's out, then place your hand around the middle, fold your fabric over. So this is what your fabric will look like, visible from the shelf, and then this is what the stack of fabric looks like. I prefer this method using fabrics of a minimum of half a yard up to four yards. I don't prefer this method with really bulky fabrics as it becomes really difficult to fold them on themselves. That's what it looks like. The next method that I'm going to show you is the comic board, book boards. The benefit to these type of boards is that they work well for vertical storage of fabric. What I have here is cotton woven. It's already folded selvage to selvage. We're going to do the same thing we did with the other um, and, and fold in half selvage to selvage. Next thing we're going to do is we need to make this the size that we can actually fold it on the board. What I usually do is I will fold it again in half so that the folded edge is over the selvage. This creates a thinner, longer piece of fabric. Now that we have that done, if you see the comic board is either exactly or a tiny bit smaller than the fabric. And then we'll do the same thing we did with the knit fabric, we'll just fold it over this board. But in this case, the board will stay in place. We won't be removing it. End of this, this can be finished. If you prefer, you can use fabric clips like you see at the store or a rubber band or paper clip to clip the ends so that this doesn't come undone. I wouldn't recommend any type of a metal clip if you're, planning on storing these long term this way because you don't want it to impact the quality of the fabric. And then this is what this looks like on the end. You can either stack them this direction or you can stack them vertically like I do. Another way to handle your fabric is by rolling it. My favorite way to store swim because it's kind of slinky and shifty is by rolling. I also store my scraps as roll. You need to get it into a manageable size to be able to roll it. It doesn't need to be uniform in size. I just kind of fold it down until I can start rolling. So I usually do selvage to selvage and then I will fold the raw edges in and then the folded edges in so it's basically in thirds and then just kind of start rolling. Now rolling I like for anything a quarter of a yard up to two yards. Anything larger than a two yard cut gets a very large roll. This is a yard and a half. And so this is what it looks like. You could put a rubber band around it if that's preference, but I usually just shove it into my swim bin. The last way to store fabric is by a hanger. You do want to be careful with hanging fabrics that are knits. Knits have a tendency to stretch and by hanging them, you're making the, them stretch with the weight of being hung. I only prefer to do hanging with woven fabrics. I just fold it however wide it needs to be for the hanger. This case, this fabric is a little 
narrower so I'm able to fit it on here. Pull it through and then it'll just kind of hang like this. Let's not forget about scraps though. So scraps, I use Ikea Drona bins. These fit into my Ikea Expedit system, cube system, and I have different scrap bins for different types of fabric. So this one is for heavy knits, including French Terry, Pont, and Sherpa. And then I have another that has Brushed Poly, Rib Knits, Triblend, and I've used the rolling method so that these are easier to locate and pull out. Thanks for joining me today to learn about how I organize fabric and I uh, hope that you enjoy some of the techniques that I utilize for folding, rolling, and hanging my fabrics in my stash. Hopefully this makes you excited to try out some new Love Notions patterns or even do some color blocking like on the game day tea. I find it's so much easier to get inspired when I can visually see my fabrics in front of me and don't have to sort through everything where I know where it is. If you have any more questions or ideas on, on ways that you organize, please feel free to leave a comment below. Otherwise, have a great day.